Planetside. What was Planetside? Well, it was one of the first games ever made that had more than 60 players in one match. It had a persistent world and large-scale combat. Planetside was a unique experience where large groups of people could form massive teams and use tactics rather than individual players' skill to win mass-scale battles on a persistent world. Planetside had its flaws, but it still lives as a classic. Does Planetside 2 do justice? Let's find out. The game itself looks like a AAA title. The graphics are high quality, they are modern, and very colorful. Most of the armor and decals are updated versions of the originals. This is hard to believe when you find out the game is free to play. A game this vibrant and deep in color costs nothing to play, coincidentally making the game well stocked with players in all hours, which is needed for a game with such a large scale. The sheer amount of players in the game is mind-boggling. Hundreds of players running all sorts of configurations. It's not unusual to see a massive armor column driving as a team in one direction. Several players cooperating in a unified front with all sorts of roles. Infantry on the ground supporting their armor column. Column, air fighters, gunships, providing air support over their ground allies, bases and battles stretching several miles wide, huge empty fields with armor on each side. They managed to capture the scale and massive battles from its predecessor. But every game has its problems, and this game is no exception. The game is very poorly optimized and extremely buggy. The game frequently crashes and requires a restart. Most people have to set the detail to below average settings for the game to run smoothly on high-end computers. People with fairly decent computers can't run it at all. Personally, I had to change options in an INI file to a setting that was not supported by the in-game options to get past 35 frames per second in a large battle. This is unacceptable. While the game is free to play, past history has shown us that the business model rarely ends up as intended. It starts out as an intuitive free-to-play game with optional credit. Buying turns into a blatant buy for power, as the only free method for obtaining the needed currency is extremely inefficient. Players are forced to buy power. The amount of time one weapon takes to unlock is approximately 50 hours of constant gameplay. This only includes one weapon. There are several unlockable items in the game that are needed for basic gameplay. The developer sells instant power compared to hours of of gameplay, which almost forces the player to pay for a free-to-play title to be competitive. While the music is fitting and engaging, it falls flat in comparison to its predecessor. However, the music plays at the worst times, taking cues from the buggy action event system, which originally was made to sync music with combat, ends up starting way too late, which ends up taking you out of the game more than it engages you. Often it is without music, ambient music is non-existent. Planetside had large quantities of ambient music the battles always had background music. With the vast quantities of content available, level design becomes bland and repetitive. Constantly, the attacking side is forced to funnel into a narrow path while the defending side bottlenecks the attackers. Biolabs, in particular, are extremely difficult for attackers to advance on defenders. The world itself ends up repeating due to the sheer size, causing mass confusion to new players unable to find the fight. The developer claimed a mission system would fix this issue but has yet to deliver. Gameplay itself has lost content. Several vehicles and infantry weapons were cut due to time constraints which ends up leaving the game feeling rushed and incomplete. Gameplay itself is lacking. Weapons seem weak and have little weight. Very few weapons rule the battlefield. Most rifles have little power, while shotguns destroy most common infantry in a single shot. Despite the developer's claims, the time to kill is inaccurate. Common infantry require a lot of firepower to kill, comparable to the original. Throughout development, the developer claimed the pace of battle would be much faster than the original, but with this inaccurate time to kill, the game is much slower than intended. Many weapons are unbalanced. Anti-aircraft comes off as weak and ineffective, leading to aircraft dominance. Bolt-action sniper rifles kill infantry with a single shot, which easily irritates the opposing team. This also discourages team play. While teams can drive each other back to their start, they cannot prevent them from being there. This eliminates a true victory scenario, since players cannot be totally driven off of a continent. As you can see, the game falls flat in many ways than one. SOE failed to live up to expectation and ultimately released a buggy rushed mess. I really wanted to like this game. They were completely open with their fan base, but the massive amounts of little issues just ruins any sort of fun possible. The game can be many times better with a few months of work from the developer, and I look forward to it. But as of release, what do I think? Yes or no? Well, as a veteran of the original, I say no.